Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 22, Canto 7, Chapter 7. Ashta prakritaya proktas Traya eva hi tadguna Vikara shodasha charyai Puman eka saman vayat Ashta prakritaya proktas Traya eva hi tadgunaha Vikara shoda shacharyai Pomane ka samanvayat Ashta prakritaya proktas Traya eva hi tadgunaha Vikara shodasha charyai Pumane kasaman vayat Ashta prakritaya proktas Traya eva hi tadgunaha Vikara Shodasha Charyai Puman Eka Samanvayat Vikara Shodasha Charyai Pumani Kasaman Vayat Ashta Prakritaya Proktas Jaya Eva Hitad Gunaha Vikara Shadasha Charyai Oman Eka Saman Vayat Ashtau Eight Prakritayaha Material Energies Prokta It is said Trayaha Three Eva Certainly He Indeed Tat Gunaha the modes of material nature. Vikaraha. Transformations. Sodasha. Sixteen. Acharyai. By the authorities. Puman. The living entity. Ekaha. One. Samanvayat. From conjugation. Translation The Lord's eight separated material energies, the three modes of material nature, and the sixteen transformations. And there's brackets the eleven senses and the five gross material elements like earth and water. Within all these, the one spirit soul exists as the observer. Therefore, all the great acharyas have concluded that the individual soul is conditioned by these material elements. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As explained in the previous verse, text 21. 
Kshetreshu Deheshu Tatatma Yogaya Adhyatma Vid Brahmagatim Labheta. Translation A spiritually advanced person can understand how the spiritual particle exists within the body. And thus, by cultivating spiritual knowledge, he can attain perfection in spiritual life. The intelligent person who is expert in finding the self within the body must understand the eight external energies which are listed in Bhagavad Gita 7.4. Bhumir ponalo vayu kamano bodhirebacha ahankara ityamme bhina prakatir ashtada earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Altogether, these eight comprise my separated material energies. Now it gets a little complicated. Bhumi, or earth, includes all the objects of sense perception. Dash, rupa, or form, rasa, or taste, gandha, smell, Shabda, sound, and sparsha, or touch. Within the earth are the fragrance of roses, the taste of sweet fruit, and whatever else we want, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.10.4. Sarva kama dukha mahi. The earth, or mahi, contains all our requirements. Thus, the objects of sense perception, the objects of sense perception are all present in Bhumi, or the earth, the gross material elements, and subtle material elements, mind intelligence, and ahankara, false ego, constitute the total material energy paragraph. Within the total material energy are the three material modes or qualities. These qualities, sattvagun, rajagun, tamagun, belong not to the soul but to the material energy. It is because of the interaction of these three material modes of nature that the five knowledge gathering senses the five working senses and their control of the mind are manifested. Then, according to these modes, the living entity gets the opportunity to perform different types of karma with different types of knowledge, thinking, feeling, and willing. Thus, the, body, the bodily machine begins to work. Paragraph. The living entity is individual. But the body is a composition of many material elements. This is proved by the fact that as soon as the living entity quits the, this combination of material elements, it becomes a mere conglomeration of matter. The matter is qualitatively one, and the spirit soul is qualitatively one. What's up? Oh. I just, my eyes skipped that short paragraph. We'll go back. Where it says that, that thus the bodily machine begins to work. New paragraph. This has all been properly analyzed in Sankhya Yoga by the great Acharyas, especially the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna in his incarnation as Devahuti Putra Kapila. This is indicated here by the word Acharyai. We need not follow anyone who is not an authorized Acharya. Acharya Van Purusho Veda, one can understand the truth fully when he has taken shelter of an expert Acharya paragraph. There's, that's the one I missed. 
The living entity is individual. But the body is, com is a composition of many material elements. This is proved by the fact that as soon as the living entity quits the, this combination of material elements, it becomes a mere conglomeration of matter. The matter is qualitatively one. The matter is qualitatively one. Meaning its quality is different than spirit. And the spirit soul is qualitatively one with the supreme. The supreme is one and the individual soul is one. But the individual soul is understood to be the master of the individual combination of the material energy, whereas the Supreme Lord is the controller of the total material energy. The living entity is the master of his particular body, and according to his activities, he is subjected to different types of pains and pleasures. However, although the Supreme Person, the Paramatma, is also one, he is present as an individual in all the different bodies. Paragraph. The material energy is in fact divided into 24 elements. The individual soul, the owner of the individual body is a 25th subject. And above everything is Lord Vishnu as Paramatma, the Supreme Controller, who is the 26th subject. When one understands all these 26 subjects, he becomes Adhyatma Vit. That's a term from the previous verse. An expert in understanding the distinction between matter and spirit, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 13.3. Kshetra, Kshetra Gayor Gyanam, understanding of the Kshetra, the constitution of the body, and of the individual soul and the supreme soul constitutes real jnana or knowledge. Unless one ultimately understands that the Supreme Lord is eternally related with the individual soul, one's knowledge is imperfect. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 7.19. Bahunam janmanam ante Gyanavan mam prapadyate Vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sadurlabaha. Translation After many births and deaths, he was actually in knowledge, surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Two more sentences. Everything, material and spiritual, consists of various energies of Vasudeva to whom the individual soul, the spiritual part of the Supreme Lord is subordinate. Upon understanding this perfect knowledge, one surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sadurlava. Sankhya, Sankhya philosophy. It's in Bhagavad Gita, it's in third canto, here it is in the seventh canto. Transcendental knowledge is a foundation for transcendence. And you know, the reverse, without transcendental knowledge there's no question of transcendence. There's, um, it, can, it can get confusing, we've easily understood how it can get confusing in terms of these numbers, like it starts with 8, then it goes to 16, then it goes to 3, and then it's mixing, and you can get confused easily. There's a
maybe an obvious question. Within Bhagavad Gita itself, as well as other places here, that indicates there's 24 elements, material elements. And within Bhagavad Gita, the verse is quoted, there's eight material elements. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego. There's eight, and over here there's 24. So which one is right? And the answer is they're both right. Huh? Eight, is it eight or is it 24? Well, it's, it's just different perspectives on the same subject, which is allowed, like our discussion yesterday, different, di different perspectives on the same subject, it's, even Krishna does. Just it's a different system of analysis. Of course, there's other things besides different systems of analysis where opinions differ or things like that. But in Krishna's case, Krishna's opinion is fact. So there's a system of eight and there's a system of 24. But the, within the system of 24, the eight are included. Let's just go go slowly. In the process of creation, and it's mentioned here in the purport, when the modes of material nature mix with pradhan. So let's go back. Pradhan is a, a term that means the unmanifested state, undifferentiated state of the total material energy. One way to think of it is a big jumbled up warehouse. Everything is there, but it's undifferentiated. And it just, it remains in that condition until agitated by the glance of Mahavishnu. And the glance of Mahavishnu specifically agitates Pradhan by uh, injecting via his glance, samasti, all the living entities, and time energy, kala shakti. So that's, that's all it takes. Time and the living entities. So living entities are of a different quality of energy. They're animate, and they animate dead matter. And time agitates the, the inert, undifferentiated condition, and in that agitated condition, the undifferentiated elements start to differentiate. They separate out. And the one that rules them all is the most subtle of them all, that's false ego. Specifically described in third canto. When, so in this Pradhan, the modes of material nature are there, but they're not active. They're dormant because they're not activated. When they become activated, then false ego mixing with the mode of goodness produces the material mind. So now we have two elements. We have false ego and mind. And false ego mixing with the mode of passion produces material intelligence. So now we have three. And then false ego mixing with the mode of ignorance produces the five gross material elements. So five plus three is, generally it's eight. And then further manifestations, different descriptions are there, but from the five elements come the five knowledge acquiring senses, the five working senses, and the five sense objects. The five sense objects are mentioned in this form, taste, smell, touch, and sound. They're within earth, without all the details. Sankhya philosophy detailed is in the third canto. But the objects of the sense are within the elements. They just divide out or separate out. They can be separated out. So um, Prabhupada would explain like this. Dig up some earth and 
extract as best you can citric acid and how much citric acid are you going to extract from earth. Take that same amount of earth, place a lemon tree, and how much citric acid is extracted? Volumes. And his explanation, Prabhupada's explanation, is this. here it's saying it's within the earth, everything that you need is within the earth, but then another perspective on the same thing is that the living entity the, that's in the tree body, the citric tree, the lemon tree body, it has mystic power. The living entity within the lemon tree has mystic power, it can produce citric acid. I defy the scientists to find the citric acid in earth. They will not. Here it's saying it's within, but it's, you know, the potential is there if you have the appropriate mystic power to extract the citric acid from earth and otherwise you have to say it produces the citric acid. But where does it come from? From the earth. Because without the earth, the lemon tree isn't going to produce citric acid. So there's this word that's used in the, uh, the last word in the verse is samanvayat. Samanvayat means from conjugation. So this meets that. Living entity with the body of a lemon tree meets earth. <laughs> and samanvayat comes citric acid. You get the idea. Um, and all of these, oh, yeah, you add those up. So there's 15, no, 20, so the five gross material elements, five working senses, five knowledge acquiring senses, five objects of the senses, four times five is 20, and then mind intelligence and false ego, that's 23, and then there's number 24, which isn't identified here, but it's in the Sankhya system and it's in chapter 13. Bhagavad Gita. Cheta is the term that's used. Sometimes it's translated as Mahatattva. Sometimes it's translated as contaminated consciousness. I don't know exactly the connection between Mahatattva and contaminated consciousness. It's clear that the living entity has is conscious and consciousness, but consciousness becomes contaminated. In any case, 24 elements we're hearing then there's 25 is the soul, 26 is su supreme soul, paramatma. So 26 elements and one who knows these 26 from the previous verse 21 is um, adhyatma vid. Vid means to know and adhyatma. So who's our, what scholar in our audience here knows these adhyatmaka, adhidaivaka, and adhibhautaka? What do those terms refer to? Adhyatmaka, adhidaivaka, adhibhautaka. You've all heard them because you're, you're brahmacharis. Yeah, so which one corresponds with which misery? Body and mind, there we go. So that's the covering. But the body and mind, adhyatmaka, vid, it's, it, it's not animated, it's, 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 there's no meaning to it without the soul. And then the soul can't do anything without the supreme soul. So that's the adhyatma vid. And how are you going to know adhyatma vid? Well, you need an acharya. That's this acharyai. And so it starts in, in here, the acharya such as Devahuti Putra Kapila, who 
we know Kapila, what's the Deva, Devahuti Putra part? Son of Putra, the son of Devahuti. Why that adjective Devahuti Putra? Because there's another, um, not such a yuga personality, a more contemporary personality that went by the name Kapila. The imposter Kapila, the atheist Kapila. He also taught Sankhya philosophy minus Krishna. What's that? Well, it's um, it's not adhyatma vid, not understanding the body and mind, the miseries. It's it's it, it's, it's an athe. He's an atheist, although. You know, and mechanistic sciences, Prabhupada is kind of doing what he usually does, the so-called philosophers and scientists, and so those people don't know these things without an acharya. It, it's, um, I remember hearing a lecture where Prabhupada was saying, even the most elementary of spiritual knowledge, we require a teacher like what child, unless you're Shukadeva Goswami, what child is born with knowledge of the soul? Nobody. Even to know ABC, we require teacher and teachings. But supposing one doesn't have a teacher and teachings, but they, they, they want, they're, they're frustrated with material existence. They, you know, and that's kind of the spirit of their spirituality. They don't buy into the material program, so they want spirituality. But they don't have a teacher. They don't have an acharya, specifically. Where well, they're not going to end up as adhyatma vit. They'll understand the misery of material existence and, and make, in, in various ways, efforts to negate it. But the, the positive spiritual happiness the soul and the soul's happiness in loving relationship with the Supreme Soul, it, it's just, it's unfortunate, but they won't come to know of that. Um, Prahlad, in his instructions to his classmates, is describing that transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge is not just, I'm just emphasizing, as Prabhupada is doing, it's not just matter and spirit, but it's also the controller of both. That's Krishna consciousness. That's where the bhakti principle enters. Then we have, there's, a, there's the possibility through that transcendental knowledge to not only detach oneself from matter, but connect oneself with the Supreme, who's the controller of both. That's what he's advocating to the students that they haven't heard it from Shanda and Amarka. They haven't heard it from their their demoniac parents. They haven't heard it. And so he he's very compassionate. He wants to give this opportunity to them. And as you recall from some verses back, he's he the preamble of all of this is please as I had faith in words in Narada, you please have faith in my words. Here we go. That it, it certainly t that an element of faith is necessary even when hearing from proper source. One to say the opposite, as Krishna says, one who is faithless isn't going to make any spiritual progress. They will have faith in something else, and you know, try your hand at it. Those of you that have met people that are atheists and or um, more politically cool is to be an agnostic but you know they actually they're atheists largely so that's okay but they have faith in something else when you have faith in something you take shelter of that something and it's hard to let go these boys that are schoolmates of Prahlad, they're a little innocent, although they're sons of demons. 
because they become very enlivened by this message and they take to the process of bhakti and they start having sankirtan and when Sanda Marka walk in it's uh oh <laughs> problema for the boys and particularly for the ringleader Prabhad. But that's our um, our service. It's our, it's, a, it's our challenge. It's also our service. Just as that wonderful prayer to Krishna that Prabhupada wrote. How are these people going to understand the message of Shuddha Sattva when they're so absorbed in Rajas and Tamas? That, that the modes of nature have a tight grip on people. How are they going to understand? But with faith in the instruction of a spiritual master to do so and faith in the instruction of the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam how to administer this bhavoshada the medicine for the soul he went forward just with faith in that principle order of spiritual master teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam That's similarly our position. Who are we? We're, we're, we're struggling ourselves with material conceptions of life and mind and senses and the whole, the whole picture. But it's possible by this descending mercy process that to become adhyatma vid and move to the transcendental position and share that with others also on the way. I'll end with that. See if there's any comments or questions here this morning. Yeah. Maharaj, you mentioned that um the ones that don't have faith. Wait, wait, slow down. He's going to turn the volume down. Go ahead. Try the again. ones who Take don't. Take it from the top. I couldn't hear it. Too okay. much. The p people hold, who hold don't. Hold it further away from your mouth. Yeah. The people who don't have faith in Krishna or his devotees, they've got to put their faith onto something. They've got to have shelter of something. Can you explain on that? It's like faith is more or less a forbidden word is, is one faith of the... Faith is more or less what? If... Yes. Can I explain that? Sure. Faith is of the soul. In the soul's purified state, there's faith in Krishna. In the soul's covered state, it's still there because it's of the soul, but it's conditioned by the modes of nature. So faith will take a different form according to the modes of nature that the living entity is covered by. And then there's divisions of faith. There's a whole chapter in Bhagavad Gita. But the principle is faith is already there. Faith is intrinsic to the soul. So if not in relation to Krishna, according to the modes of nature, what's your favorite mode? And then that's going to determine the nature of the faith of someone. All right? What are some examples? Some examples. Uh, but, you know, faith in the, in the quality of goodness, faith in the quality of passion, faith in the quality of ignorance. There's somebody that's, that's opposing me. I should destroy them. And I have my methods of destroying those that oppose me. I have faith in those methods. Passion. I'll find happiness if I get objects. To get objects, I need power. I need money. I need good education so I can get a good job, so I can get good money, so I can get the objects, so I can become happy. Driven by passion. Faith in the mode of passion. Or the Olympic athlete, or whatever, whatever. then I get happiness.
Yes. Um, when you were mentioning the, the Mahatattva, and you know, I always hear the term like contaminated consciousness, but I guess I, I wanted more clarification on if that means that the soul itself has some sort of contamination, or is it simply because he has a contaminated subtle body that he's considered contaminated? Well, you're looking for clarification on the term contaminated consciousness? Yeah, because I, like, I was under the impression that consciousness itself was always pure, even yes. though it's... Yeah. It is. I, I'll do my best. It's not easy subject. Um, we have consistently heard from Srila Prabhupada, the soul is both conscious and consciousness. So in the soul's original state, the soul is pure. The soul doesn't mix with matter. But through the agency of false ego, the soul identifies with matter. The soul is always transcendental, but, to the, just say it again, through the agency of false ego, we identify with matter, and that's how we become conditioned by matter, although we're not. Paro P, you know, Vyasa Dave's realization in trance. The living entity is para. Although he's para, manute, he thinks himself otherwise. So now, consciousness is pure, but through the agency of false ego, we've identified with matter. And so our consciousness, although pure, becomes influenced. We make, it's right in the language of this purport, but f we make choices. Free will choices, that's of the soul to be implicated in matter. And we're making it every, every moment. It's not like once upon a time we made a mistake, a, a, a free will choice. We're making that choice through the agency of contaminated consciousness. So on the one hand, this is the you know, apparent dichotomy. Consciousness is, as the soul is pure, consciousness is pure. And now we are saying that consciousness is contaminated. So which is it? <laughs> it's one of those. It, it's, it, it's something like, again, I'm doing my best, it's something like the rays of the sun. The rays of the sun are, you know, heat and light. And then the rays of the sun may pass through clouds. And I can't see the fullness of the rays of the sun because there's clouds in the way. They obfuscate or block the fullness of the rays of the sun. But the rays of the sun are not changed. It's just my vision of the sun has changed because of the cloud blocking the, full, the direct rays of the sun. Consciousness, similarly, consciousness is pure. But because of these other 23 things, consciousness is contaminated. It's not seeing as things really are. We're not seeing the self. We're not seeing the elements, we're not seeing Krishna, we're not seeing one another, we're not seeing properly. Although consciousness is pure, it's also appropriate to say it's obfuscated, or you know, that's a nice word, it, it, it's, it's covered, there's a block. Um, like, it has the potentiality to be pure? Yeah. It, 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 here's another example, like, you know, air is pure. But, you know, visit Los Angeles. There's all kinds of smog, you, you know, visit Beijing. Shoo! Air is pure. <laughs> Colorless, odorless, tasteless. I was riding in a car in, in the afternoon and I thought, what happened? It's, it's like, almost dark that oh that's the smog of Beijing it becomes so it's different because consciousness is spiritual and air is not spiritual but it's so it, it's a the comparison has its limitations it's, a, it's an analogy but as air is pure but looks polluted because it's just carrying other things besides air in it Consciousness is pure, but you know the, the, the whole surrounding of the soul 
through the agency of false ego misidentifying with all of it, its action is contaminated. So therefore, sometimes, you know, cheta, contaminated consciousness. So it's a different way of looking at the same thing. Anything else? Yes? This statement here, Acharyavan Purushoveda, one can understand the truth when he has fully taken shelter of an expert Acharya. So my question, um, I recently heard uh, someone related to me that a, a senior devotee had mentioned one time um, to, to Jaya and Jai Jagannath, and he said that, <clears throat> I'm trying to relate it to the purport, it might be a little bit off topic. It might, this might be a little bit off topic, but it's a, it's, I'm trying to relate it to this. Sure. So, so he said that um, in terms of taking shelter of the Acharya, the senior devotee mentioned, well, I'm not in, I don't care about prema, I just want to serve my spiritual master. I just want to serve Prabhupada. And it sounded like an interesting, and it sounded like an interesting statement. Um, and, you know, some of us were just curious isn't the instruction of the spiritual master? I mean, it it seemed a little bit. Um, anyway, I, I understand the question because I've heard the question, and I've heard the discussion on the question, and it's an interesting question. For for some, um, for some it's immaturity, for some it's maturity. You can say the same thing, meaning. Um, I have faith that within the s faithful adherence to the instructions of my spiritual master everything will come everything is there access to everything including prema is there so I don't need to like I, I need to stay focused <laughs> It's like the, the verse that um, Brahma speaks to Krishna after the Brahma Vimohan Leela. And he says, just, just stay fixed at your lotus feet. And Mukti Pade Sodaya Bhak. You know, that's the verse that Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said. No, it should say Bhakti Pade Sodaya Bhak. That verse, that's the verse I'm speaking of. So, Krishna is the giver of mukti, and he does so through by giving bhakti, so it's not wrong. By Vyasadeva saying, mukti pade. He could have said bhakti pade, and that's not wrong either. Similarly, this isn't wrong, and that's not wrong. Except the person who says, you know, like Rishabh Dave's verse, Mahat Sevam Dvara Mahor Vimuktes. Same principle. There's a Dwaram, there's a, a, an entryway. And that entry, Dvaram, is Mahat Sevam. Ahor Vimuktes. So what's that Mukti? It's you know, for for a Vaishnava, specifically a Gaudiya Vaishnava, it's prema. Mahatsevam dwara mahorvi muktes. It's the Bhagavatam's teaching. It's nothing wrong. It's not that person has the you know they have a wrong sentiment. They have the right sentiment. It's the, it's, it will follow as one goes further by the by um, descending mercy that comes from the acharya. It'll be bestowed upon one. Then there's other perspectives that say you need to know what the goal is, not just the means to reach the goal. <coughs> so I want to emphasize while you're striving to reach the goal, you should know what the goal is and hanker for the goal. Different emphasis. But it's not 
One's right and the other's wrong. And they can argue with each other. And then there's groups, and then they're bashing. And Karuna Nidhi, how nice to see you. Speaks slowly and clearly. Uh, Maharaj, uh, in uh, paragraph 4, there is a statement. Uh, Prabhupada explained that uh, how the, how, when one quits his body, that means he, it is a conglomeration of matter. So, uh, I was uh, just thinking of about the instance how Lord Chaitanya explained something to Mother Sachi regarding the earth when he was eating something. The Mother Sachi also explained something. So I could not uh, get that clear idea. Can you please explain how is it related to that? Can you give the microphone to Nityananda and Pran? He's going to relay the question because I couldn't follow it. In the fourth paragraph of the purport, Prabhupada is referring to when the soul leaves the body. What, there's four? In the fourth paragraph yes. of the purport, when the soul leaves the body, yeah. the body mixes with earth. And then he's saying that there is a conversation between Lord Chaitanya, Nimai, and Mother Sachi on this topic. And he didn't understand that interaction between Mother Sachi and Nimai. Pandit, could you kindly explain? You'd like to hear what the conversation between Nimai and Sachi was? Well, there, although it's speaking of earth, that's about where the similarity ends because Nimai, what had happened was Vishvarup, Nimai's elder brother, had taken sannyas. So Mother Sachi, in her mind, she blamed Advaita Acharya because Vishvarup was going to hear his classes. He developed detachment by hearing his classes, so he left. So Jagannath Mishra and Sachi decided, no school for you. So Nimai was not going to school. So instead of going to school, he was sitting on a pile of the discarded clay pots that were used for cooking. And Mother Sachi saw that, and she scolded him, said, this is unclean. That's why we you know, put them over here, because it's unclean. And then Nimai countered, what's the difference? It's all one. The earth is simply clay pots. If I sit on the earth, you're not upset with me. And the, the clay pots are nothing but earth. Mother Sachi, it's all one. And she said, where did you hear this philosophy? <laughs> it's all one. It's all one. Then she explained that earth, when it's shaped in the form of a pot and put in fire, then it can carry water. But the earth can't carry water. So although they're both made of earth elements, one is a pot and the other is the earth. And once we've used it, then we discard it. So um, yeah, that was the discussion. Which is different than when the soul leaves the body, it goes back to its elemental form. That's a different sense. They're both about earth, but that's about it, how they're similar. The, 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 the soul is the integrating factor to make a body. When the soul leaves, it disintegrates. It goes back to its elemental form, like Ishopanishad, that the air merged with the totality of air, and you know, the elements go back to their disintegrated uh, state. The soul is the integrating force. Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. <laughs>